here. So here's today's program that we're going to analyze. We're looking to look at client S, 38 year old female. She is 5'6", 175 pounds with a BMI of 27.5. She's currently unemployed. Now with this, I also wanna talk a little bit about sales and the assessment and automatically your mind, when you see this is probably gonna go, oh, well, she's not gonna buy training. Um, I'm just going to go fast and take her through a half-assed workout. She's wasting my time. If you take that approach, you're going to have a hard time in this industry. you got to remember why we got into this because we love to help people. So this person, doesn't matter if she's tall, skinny, wide, whatever, we can help her. And in that hour that she's in front of you, do your best to give 110%. And what you're going to find is that – there could be opportunities in the future that present themselves. So even if she does not train with you, do not make it transactional. So you present a package to her. She says, I can't afford it. I'm unemployed. Okay, well, then that's it. And you never talk to her again. You need to follow up. Send her more programs. Check in every month. Get your calendar. Always have something with you where you know, you're, you're tracking the success of your clients. So you have a, a to-do list. And I, I think it'd be great to have like a, some type of document where every month you go in there and you follow up with clients that you haven't seen. For whatever reason, they didn't sign up because of COVID or because a family member uh, came into town. Your clients are going to have so many excuses. Why don't you think people are going to be training right now? What's the number one excuse? Gyms are open. Yep. And number two? holidays holidays it's like i don't know about you guys but i know a lot of people right now that friday they have two weeks off after friday so that should be an excuse to exercise more but we have different mindsets right you know we love this shit your clients don't so if you're if you see your business typically dropping down which is pretty common around now you got to buckle down and use this as an opportunity to create whether if it's content programming products Maybe you want to make some uh, uh, koozies that have the 17 muscles on the back. So when you're drinking your beer, you can talk about the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor. Come up with some type of creative things that you can sell your clients. We have some other ones in here that I'm going to show you where a client only has a couple dumbbells at home. Well, if you have a, a band that you bought online for 10 bucks and you sell it to your client for 20 bucks, you just profited $10. And if you were to do that tenfold, you're going to be doing significantly better than you would be if you didn't have that band. So we're going to talk about severe osteoporosis. She just found out that her mother has that. She had a T-score of 2.8, negative 2.8. I really don't want that in my life ever, she says. I now have poor posture and low back pain also stems from lack of abdominal muscles. I have a weak ankle, which is the right one due to rolling it in 2018 of December. It does not hurt, but I still favor it. My knees sort of scrunch. They do click and it's bothersome, but they do not cause pain. In the beginning, I want to become stronger and healthier, have more energy, but eventually lose stubborn fat. The last thing that I require is an educated trainer because I have an eating disorder and I'm in tentative recovery. This has nothing to do with exercise. However, when my fitness improves, the urges and symptoms will go away. Currently, she does walk her dog two to four times per week. Now in class today, we discussed uh, when in doubt, refer out. Now the fact that she disclosed the eating disorder, I would want to learn more about that and what she's comfortable with. I'm not a uh, registered dietitian. I'm not going to give you any nutrition advice. I always suggest for my clients to eat more protein, drink more water, and have more fruits and vegetables. But you need to be working with your proper uh, designated professional, and they're going to take care of the eating stuff. If there's any questions that you have, I'm more than happy to, to aid. But I want to be very clear that because of this, you need to be constantly working with them. So when it comes to metabolic disease, thyroid, or uh, meta, um, diabetes, I'm going to refer out, and I'm not going to deal with that stuff. I actually love working with my clients who are type 1 or type 2 diabetic or have thyroid problems because they're in constant communication with their doctor. We can never tell our clients to go off meds. 
And we're not going to say, oh, well, maybe you should change up your diet a little bit to monitor your blood glucose levels. No, that's not our role as trainers. So the, this is these are taken right off of our website. And this was what, two and a half years ago that this was submitted. So when we worked with her. She was in the, uh, the, the uh, Santa Monica location. And she came in, we educated her about severe osteoporosis. So who could tell me something about osteoporosis? Anyone? It can be reversed by loading. Nice. Love it. So you're absolutely correct. It can be reversed if you properly load it. I like to think of osteoporosis and compare it to obesity. Where the BMI, we have 25 to 29.9, and that's, that's called overweight. I associate that with what's called osteopenia. It's the precursor. Osteoporosis would be associated with like obesity. Obesity is greater than 30 on the BMI scale, whereas osteoporosis is the severe condition of holes in your bone. Who could tell me what the word osteo or osteon means? Crickets. Come on, we got to go through our 14 systems of the human body. Can you hear me? Bone? Yeah, it's the, it's the basic unit for bone. Yeah, very good. So we have a uh, nice job, Dean. So you have uh, <laughs> osteon. What's the basic unit for muscle? Sarcomere, nice job. And the basic unit for the nervous system. Yeah. Neuron. Neuron. You want to get real nerdy, does anyone know the, the basic unit for the kidneys? It's called the nephron. And then for the liver, the basic unit is called the hepatocyte. So think of hepatitis as a uh, inflammation of the liver. So with this bone mineral density, good job there, Dean. Uh, you need to go to a doctor and they're gonna screen you since you take an x-ray. And so what happens is they measure your bone out. So let's see if I can get a photo of it. Here we go. So you see right here, actually here's a better one. The, the white part of the bone there, the dark white, that is going to basically be a good indicator of a healthy bone. So they measure that thickness. And the thicker that it is, the healthier the bone is. The more sedentary an individual is, the body adapts to stress. Have you guys, anyone in here ever broke a bone or anything? Anyone? No. Lucky. I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've broken one bone in my body. I always love doing this one. I'm not flipping you guys off, but you can still see it's kind of even swollen there. I broke my last little digit of my phalange in my finger. Long story of drinking on that one. But uh, what happens is when you, uh, when you break a bone, that area typically will atrophy. So atrophy is a lack of loading to the muscle. The same thing happens to bone. When you do not load it, the bone will become weaker. Now, who are some individuals in the world that may be prone to a lack of loading? Who are some individuals that may be prone to a lack okay. of loading? Elderly, definitely. People that don't work out. Yes. And uh, well, let's, uh, yeah, you're, you're correct. People um, who don't resist in strength. Yeah, you're, you're definitely correct. It's like, it's a spectrum, right? So I was in class today, we were looking at a girl who had a degree in, in nutrition science. And it just kind of sometimes irritates me when people step over the line. And she was essentially telling people about bone mineral density and like, oh, you want to increase your bone health walk. I mean, that's like saying you want to, you want to decrease obesity, stand up one time a day. It's like, okay, well, that's, a step, sure, but in the spectrum, because it's a spectrum, walking is down here, and here would be running, here would be jumping, and then way down there would be resistance training. And I'm not talking about resistance training five-pound weights. 
I'm talking about a legitimate load. And that's the program that we're going to design for her today. The other group of people that I was looking at, bedridden individuals or sedentary, but also astronauts. Astronauts have had a uh, history of bone problems due to when they're in the machine, also when they're in space, the lack of loading really messes with their bones and it can have an adverse effect. Another group of individuals is called the female triad. Has anyone ever heard of the female triad? No. Yes. Ooh, Natalie, explicate, por favor. Oh, it's going to be rusty, but it's, so it's like with like very intense female athletes and they like lose their period. Um, usually something with their bone mineral density. And then I want to say it's eating or hair falling out, something like that. I can't really remember. Yeah, you go. So you're right there. Uh, it's a eating disorder that causes that. So typically it would be bulimia or potentially anorexia. So what happens is amenorrhea is a lack of menstruation. We're working out really hard. Our body fat percentage is really, really low. And then we have eating disorders, which will then affect our bones. And at this juncture of a, a young woman's life, the damage to the bone can be permanent for the rest of their life. So it's really, really paramount in those situations, if you are a coach, um, is to make sure that you get these individuals in the proper care. That's not us as a strength coach or as a trainer. It's getting them into a psychologist, um, a, a physician, or a dietitian. So it's a really nasty condition. Other than that group, one of the best things for osteoporosis is working out. Now, some things to be aware of is, as Juan said earlier, you can reverse this condition. It's like type 2 diabetes, but a bone mineral density scan would take about six months to show a decrease, meaning as we said over here, let's take a look at, and that scan is called the DEXA scan. Ah, wrong one. Not you. So she talks about having a, a T-score of and we're going to get off online. So she talks about having a, a T-score of negative 2.5. So it will actually decrease, meaning it will begin to get to a 2. Less than negative 1.5 will go back down to your normal uh, range. And so um, what we want to do is when we design this program, just like with anyone, you just ask questions. So let's address some of these questions that she has in here. So poor posture and low back pain. What are your... What are your thoughts around that and what should we address? Poor posture, I would definitely address like her, you know, upper back strength, maybe do like a overhead screen, just see her shoulder mobility and then lower back, um, probably look at strengthening her glutes and her core. Those are great suggestions. Yeah, I think that would be going down the right path. Um, lack of, she's saying, abdominal muscles. So you know, I think that a very underrated um, exercise would be planking of some sort. So just teaching her how to do those. If, if, during the assessment, when I learned this, I would probably just bring her down to the floor or in the little aerobic area next to me. And I would uh, teach her how to do a plank, teach her how to do a bridge, teach her how to posterior and anterior pelvic tilt, uh, maybe progress it into a single leg bridge, side plank. I would show her three or four exercises that she can do daily and also at home that's going to help her. She talks about her knees scrunching. Uh, anyone know what that's called? Knee valgus? Well, knee valgus is, is, uh, is a term for the quote-unquote dysfunctional movement. So if we were okay. to squat and your knees internally rotate at the hip and adduct at the knee, that's what we would call dynamic knee valgus. But that is not what she's talking about. This term is called crepitus. It starts with a C, crep, C R E P. Crepitus is just a, just like this. It's just nitrogen being released from a socket. It's, it's no biggie. It freaks your clients out. I like to kind of make a joke and I say it's your body's way of waking up. It's okay. Is it radiating? Is it shooting? Does it hurt you? Is it numb? Those are words I'm more concerned about. She says it's not bothersome. You could also have like a tendon that flips over a little ridge, like a condyle or something. Maybe that's what's just different. It's funny because it's like 
it's like cats and uh, what, what are they freaked out of? What's all the, the cucumbers? You see those those videos? They just lose their shit. It's like your clients. They they move. They do a step up, and you hear like a pop, and they're like, <gasps> that hurt. And so it's like, okay, did that hurt, or did the sound just scare you? And so you think that it hurt. Well, I know I've never heard that before. Okay, well, you know, let's not push anything we're not comfortable with, but you're not going to hurt yourself in, by doing a step up. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to spot you. Let's do it again. If anything feels off, you have me to spot you, but let's see if it happens again. And it pops again. Okay, well, is it numb? Is it shooting? I just don't like it. If you don't like it, that's fine. We can regress. Let's do a hinge pattern instead of a unilateral. But more times than not, it's just going to be something that's different to them. So I educate them on that. And then uh, she talks about having a priority of getting stronger, healthier, more energy, and stubborn fat. So great. You are in the hands of an educated trainer. We're all educated. We can help you with your goals. So let's go over what that program would look like. Now, the assessment for her, I, I wouldn't, you know, there's nothing crazy. I would do a blood pressure. I probably wouldn't do measurements. Uh, why don't you think I would do measurements? Because she has an eating disorder? Yeah, I don't want to get into the numbers game with her. I don't want to have her get on the scale. I don't want to do body fat percentage. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I would probably do a grip strength. And I, then I would do her, um, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> just uh, maybe blood pressure just for, just to keep it that, that little factory. But uh, I don't want to get into numbers with her. Let's just focus on moving properly. I want to, we just addressed her low back. She has some ankle issues. Okay, the, I would have her maybe do a gait test. So I want you just to walk down, turn around and come back to me, see if she has any eversion at the ankle, if she has any abnormal uh, walking patterns, maybe a hip shift or something like that. What that does, it just gives credibility to the trainer that you're listening to what she said. She said she had back pain. Okay, we just addressed that. That's going to take care of that. Probably within three days, she'll be like, oh my God, my back pain's gone. Planking, uh, it's a neutral spine exercise and it's just, it's a game changer. And just work on side planking and then bridging the glutes, like you said, Natalie. So that's a great one to do. And then you have her walk. Okay, let me come over to the wall, put your fist down, or if you want to measure it out four inches, let's do some ankle mobility drills. Let's stand on one leg. Let's take a look at your hip strength and also just balance. Or maybe I'll make it fun. Uh, a test that they say, if you guys want to try it right now, you stand on one leg. Can you close your eyes for 15 seconds? They call that a centennial test. So they have found that people that can do that are had a greater likelihood to live to be 100. One leg, no, uh, no eyes, uh, eyes closed. So maybe I would do that with her to see how her ankle mobility is. People talk about balance and balance is interesting because balance is just typically a lack of strength at the hip. Uh, so let's do some strengthening exercises. I like the airplane where you bend your knee so we can do that before the workout. Maybe we stand on one leg, put a band on her knees, sidewalk. She's going to feel that in her glutes. She may even feel her low back tightening up. And those are good signs that your body's working. I like it. All right, so now let's get into, uh, we address the ankle now. So let's get into the workout. So she wants to get healthier. So the program that we're going to design is our core patterns. So we have a core, a core the accessory or accessory could be a corrective as well. I'll call that CAX. It could be abs. It could be cardio. It could be whatever she likes. And then two would be the same. A core, B accessory. And then three would be core, A would be accessory. And B, oops, sorry, core. And then B would be accessory. So what rep range do you think we're going to start out with? 12 to 15. Yep, I agree. How many sets would you suggest? Three tops. Yep, I agree. And, and some people will say, in my life, I have maybe one time I've done one set of exercises. Typically, 99% of the time, it's going to be three, the occasional two for the really, really deconditioned person. We have a person on the assessment form that we have here that's uh, over 300 pounds. That may be a circumstance, but typically you're going to have like a neural recognition set where the weight's real light. And then you progressively overload the second one and the third one. So maybe you get one solid set, but we're going to do three sets. 
people talk about tempo. I, I don't even use tempo personally. It's just slow and controlled. So you, concentrically, which is the shortening, you want it to be explosive, meaning that even for her, you want to come out of it with intent. I don't know why you would ever, besides injuries, I don't know why you'd ever want to slow down the concentric. Because in life, nothing is slowed down concentrically unless it's on TV and it's slow-mo. You don't fall slow. You fall fast. And so your brain needs to be able to recruit those type 2 muscle fibers. So even with the beginner, if I'm doing a goblet squat and I'm having her come down, whatever tempo you want to do, I'm going to have her come up fast and controlled. I don't want to bounce. I don't want to jerk. But the eccentric, I want control. The concentric, I want to be faster, but with control as well. Our rest period, and again, I, I, I don't even like the term rest because I, I don't use a, a timer. I go strictly off of Jade, uh, Jade, Jade Tita. I like what his was. He says, work until you rest, rest until you work. So what that means is, you know, I, I want to learn more about her. And well, what's her name going to be? Ashley. <laughs> Ashley. I think I heard Ashley. So we got Ashley. Okay, so Ashley, I'm going to say her name during the workout. I want to learn more about her. I want to learn what sports she played in high school. I want to build a rapport because she sounds like, and I'm not saying this in a negative way, but maybe she has some, you know, maybe some skeletons in her closet a little bit. So I want her to feel very comfortable with me. I'm going to, you know, pre-COVID, I'm going to shake her hand before I manipulate a hip or a shoulder or anything during her movement, I'm going to ask permission if we were to do eccentric pull-ups. Is it all right if I lift you up by the waist? I'm going to be very, very, very professional. And so when she does her first core movement, so we have a hinge, a squat, a unilateral push, and a pull. Some people will incorporate other ones within those core patterns, and that's all right. But we want to focus on what her main goals are. So she didn't even really tell us her main goal. She wants to get healthier. I stereotype the hell out of the sexes. And guys typically want one thing. Girls typically want the other. So we have 12 people in here. I can't see the, the, the sex difference, but I see Keisha and Natalia right here. You're going to be Ashley right now. And hypothetically, what muscle groups do you think that she wants to train? Her butt. Okay. So Keisha said that, not me. Butt. And... <laughs> What else? Her abdomen. Her, okay. her yeah. abs. That's it. Uh, butt and abs. You get that a lot. Sometimes you get thighs and abs. Maybe you'll get um, core and arms. I've never heard a girl come in and be like, Chris, I want to get jacked traps. Never happened. Never had a girl say she wants giant quads. I've never heard a girl come in and be like, you know, I'm really working on getting like that block chest. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> That's guy lingo. You know, guys want the, the shoulder pop. We want the, the V taper back. We want to be shredded. We want to be jacked. Girls, it's more delicate lingo. It's, you know, you want to be toned. You want to be sexy. You want to be sleek. Whatever vocabulary she uses, I'm going to use a mirroring approach. So if she says, I really want to tone up my legs. Great. I'd love to help you tone up your legs. You know, I really want a big ass. Oh, we're going to get you a big old booty. I'm going to kind of just mirror what she's saying. <laughs> never assume, never assume. You know, if she comes in and, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, oh, Ashley, I can tell you want to lose five or 10 pounds and you probably want to build your boot, your, your buddy, your booty. <laughs> she's going to be like, uh, well, maybe I didn't. So never assume. So we're going to go off any of the three lower body patterns that you can do. So we have three of them right here. Which one would you like to do first? Goblet squat. So which pattern? Squat. Okay, we have a squat pattern. So it gives us two left for here. What would you like to do on the second one? Let's go uh, the second one. What, what, what's that one? Hinge. Hinge. And then the third one will be left with unilateral. unilateral. Some people will call this lunge. I don't like it when people call it a lunge. And that's just my own thing because, you know, working with athletes, it's fine. But general population, you know, if you have a client who's 250 pounds, a lunge is not appropriate. I want to teach them how to properly 
work with like a, a step up or a step down. That's going to be way better for them. So then we have upper body patterns. And what are they? Uh oh. Did I lose you guys? Upper body pattern. Back. Yeah. So what, what would that pattern be? That's a muscle. Uh, pull. pull. If we do a pull there, we'll do a push here. And let's do, you guys choose either a vertical or a horizontal push or pull. Horizontal pull. All right, HP. And then the accessory, you add those in. So the beautiful thing about this template is what it does is you can go to this exercise vocabulary list. So let's, let's just do another one. So Mark said goblet squat. Who can name another squat exercise? Front squat, back squat. Okay, what else? Box. What else? Body weight squat. Like that one. Put a TRX in there. Does a uh, pulsing squat count? What'd you just say? You say Bosu ball squat? No, no. <laughs> I know you ain't that. No, but oh, I said I will no, shut said, this I, call I, off I right now if you I, say that again. I don't cuss during these calls, man. I don't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> no, what did you say? No. I couldn't I couldn't get you on a uh can you hear me now? Pulsing yeah. squats. One more? Pulsing P U L. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pulsing, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so pulsing variations. Um, yeah, there's, you can do like a dumbbell squat, maybe you have a safety bar squat, safety bar squat. So the nice, so then let's go into, actually, let's go here. And then let's go into the next one, which let's, let's just name some pull exercises. That pull down. A lap pull down. What else? Renegade row. Renegade row. Renegade row. What else? Chin up. Chin up. Bossy. Bossy, nice. Table row, dumbbell row, TRX row, delay row. Your exercise vocabulary, I tell you, I tell our interns that every single time you work out, type in one of these patterns and put them into the workout. So today I did back. So if you're trying to improve your back vocabulary, type in top 10 back exercises. And then the next day when you come in, type in top 10 most uncommon back exercises, whether if it's Athlean X or some dipshit online with his shirt off, whatever. Take that exercise and try it. It's the pattern that we're looking at. And so when we come and design the workout, all I'm doing here is taking the squat pattern, hey, and putting in one of those exercises. I'm taking the pull pattern and putting in one of those exercises. So does it matter if I'm at the gym? And Juan is sold on the goblet squat. It's a pretty easy exercise to kind of manipulate, right? You just grab a dumbbell and you go in the corner. But what if you're set on the back squat and the bar, the, the rack's taken? Well, you can use another one of these. Maybe you, maybe you have a, a Smith machine and you want to use that. That's fine. Maybe you have a, in, in La Jolla, we have a squat pro exercise. It's a machine. You want to use that. You have your squat pro. That's fine. The exercise isn't nearly as important as the intensity. So this is what I'm really most concerned about. And as you gain more experience, you're going to learn what's appropriate. So let's go off of what Mark said, and we're going to do a, uh, a goblet squat. We don't know what Ashley looks like, but uh, you know we got an idea with her BMI being kind of low. I'm just going to assume she's kind of a soft, skinny body physique. So what do you think we're going to use for a goblet? How much weight on the dumbbell? 15 or 20, yeah. I always ask before too. I don't ask in a way where I'm, I'm 
unconfident or uncertain, like how much weight would you like to use? Do you want to use a 10, a 20, or a 30? I'm just going to ask you, I said, Ashley, when was the last time you did some goblet squats? Goblet squat, I've never done them before. And she's going to have that voice just like I did. Okay, great. We're going to start out with 15s. I just want to check out your form. Now, when we do this, I'm going to do it first. I want you to look at me. I'm going to put the weight here. We're going to take a breath in as we come down. And as we come up, we're going to breathe out. These are the checkpoints I'm going to be looking at. I want your feet to be on the ground, big toe, little toe, and heel. I want your knees to track through your toes. And it does help some people when they initiate the squat to start with more of their butt coming back like you're sitting down to a chair. And this is what it looks like. And great. Here's the weight. I'm going to hand it to her, get her into a position. She starts squatting. I'm walking around 360 degrees. Her knees are going to come in a little bit. I'm going to tap her knee. I'm not going to stop and get a foam roller out and foam roll for 17 hours and stretch. No, I'm just going to give that cue. Drive your knees out a little bit. Nice job. Good job, Ashley. Looking really good. Oh, that's really live for you. Good job. Good job. There's your 15th rep. Good. I'm going to take it from her. I go put it back. And now we're going to do a pull exercise. So which pull exercise would you like to do? All right, we're gonna do a chin up. I think I love the chin up because a lot of girls that I work with in the general population uh, population they cannot do a chin up. Now, if she were to be significantly overweight or obese, or she were to have some type of shoulder problem, which she does not have, I would not do this. So she's good to go. I get her up there. I'm gonna ask permission beforehand, and we're gonna focus on the eccentric. How many eccentrics are we gonna do? Three to five. Good. So we do 15 on the squat. The first round we do three. She does awesome. And then notice the B. The B is kind of left open. So I'm going to ask her part of that assessment when she comes in today, what do we really feel like training today? And she says, uh, Natalie, what do you want to train? What do I want to train today? Yeah. What muscle? Let's do quads. Quads. So she wants to do some quad stuff. So then maybe if I'm at a gym, I do some leg extensions. If I'm at the, you know, our studio, maybe I do some reverse Nordics. Maybe I do a wall sit. So I do an exercise specific to the muscle group that she wants to do. Maybe I do it for time. I rest for however she's doing. Okay, that's our first circuit, Ashley. What we're going to do is we're going to rest until you're ready to go. I do like to make sure we get at least a couple minutes in between sets. As we progress month to month, six months from now, we're going to be resting a good three or four minutes because we want to optimize our tension. The heavier weight that we go, that's going to help with your bone density. That's something that you're afraid of. So six months from now, it's going to be really cool to see this transformation because right now we're starting out really light and you were able to do 15 pounds in your first set. Six months from now, you're going to be able to back squat at least 25s on each side. And that's the vertical loading that we need to really stimulate the bone. So it's really cool to be able to see that transformation. I'm excited to see it with you. I'm planting seeds in her mind that we're working together for six months. So I do that circuit. When she's ready, I make that decision. We go again. So now I give her 20 pounds. And she does it maybe 12 reps, maybe 15. We'll see how she does. If she's just absolutely crushing it, maybe I'll have her slow down to my tempo for a couple reps. This time I try to get involved. So at the top of her last rep, I push her. And guys are always the worst. Guys push like this. They, they, they push and they jerk. No, it's just it's a little bit of a push. And then you feel that tension. Stabilize. Nice. Good, 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 good. Nice job, Ashley. Close your eyes. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Good job. Nice. If you post-COVID, maybe you do a hand slap, whatever. I take the weight, I put it away, and then we're going to go into the pull-ups. Same thing. Chin-ups, sorry, chin-ups. We're going to do three reps. Maybe we have her hold for five seconds at the top, this last set, last rep, and then we go into the last wall set. And then we go back into the goblets. Now we're going to do a 25-pound goblet. Then we go into the chin-up, same thing, into the wall set. Really nice. Ashley, can I get you some water? At any time, if you feel a little woozy or lightheaded, it's very, very common, so let me know. We're going to go into the next one. So it's the same template now. Let's name a couple hinge patterns. Cardio. No, hinge patterns. Oh, thank you. I thought you said cardio. I'm like, what the hell is cardio? No. Okay, I got you. RDL. Yes, RDL. Trap bar deadlift. Love it. What else? Deadlift. 
There you go. Sumo, any deadlift, landmine deadlift. That's, that's the only thing open in the gym right now. So we use the landmine deadlift. Push, easy to do a push up. As an accessory, maybe she really wants to work on her core. Maybe we do some more of those planks in there. And we go that a couple of times. Now, there's a couple of different scenarios here. Now, if when Ashley came in, if this was the first workout and this was the assessment, depending on how long the assessment takes, we may only do uh, maybe one or two of these circuits. It depends on the scenario. Sometimes what will happen is it's a 30 minute assessment. We come out here and I'll just show her a squat pattern. I'll do a goblet. I'll do a push up and a pull up. And that will be it. And we'll go down, we'll go back and sit down and I'll go over pricing. You have to get a feel for that environment and the flow of the scenario. It could be nice and easy transition. Maybe she wants more of a workout. You don't have a client after you. So you want to go for 60 to 90 minutes. That's perfectly okay. You're in control of that situation. So let's pretend like you don't have anyone after you. You don't have a five o'clock. She came in at four. You're doing well. So you take her through the rest of the workout. We do the RDL into a push up into a plank. Next set, we add some weight and I'm teaching her how to hinge. So butt back, not driving through the knees. And then the push up, she's just, it's usually, you'll, you'll find a client, like there's one exercise every single time that they kind of surprise you. Like you didn't expect that. So she just hops down there and actually just starts cranking out push ups. Like, oh, damn, girl, let it go. I like that. So the second set, we lift the leg up and we hold it out the entire time. That's going to get her core engaged. And that's probably something that she's never done before. And the third round, we add more weight to the RDL other side with the push-up maybe maybe i do them with her and we slap hands make it fun and enjoyable in that regard and then we do the the um planks again now for our unilateral what exercise would you like to do step up all right so we do a step up and when she does it okay sorry go ahead uh horizontal pull policy and then for an accessory, she wants to really work her, she wants to do cardio. High knees, jumping jacks. Yep, yep, so we're gonna do high knees. So you start out, you set the block up and you do a step up and she goes, ah, see, there it is. That's the sound, I, don't, I just don't like it. I don't like that sound. Okay, no, don't worry about it. Let's try a side step up. Because a lot of times when we go, it's called the sagittal plane, front and back, that maybe the, the body's just a little different in that plane. Let's try a side step up. Side step up. I don't know what it is with side step up. It's sort of like the miracle for everything. If someone has a headache, they do a side step up, they go, it goes away. She does a side step up. And she's like, oh my God, my knee doesn't make that sound anymore. Great. Let's do side step ups. You see how I regressed. I listened to what she said. She was uncomfortable. I tried something else. Now, if she was still irritated from that, I would just go to the ground and maybe do a, a single leg bridge or maybe just do some bridges. Then we do our pull and then we do the high knees and maybe I'm going to lower the rest period because I want her to maybe sweat a little bit. I want her to, you know, feel the intensity of the workout. Maybe I add in something else and, and depending on how like the flow of everything that's going, if, if we have 15 minutes le left and I've gone through this whole thing, I might even throw in like a little bit of a game at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into a plank position together and like in West Hollywood, maybe I'll have her shoot a couple basketballs. So she shoots five basketballs. She, she misses three shots. Then we have to hold the plank together. Or, or maybe we run back and forth in, in San Diego. Maybe we go outside and we, run, we walk down to, the, to see the sunset because the sunset's happening right now. Get creative with that. That's the stuff your clients love. Most trainers are going to be aggressive with the workout and they're going to be very pushy with the sales. So when you take a, a complete opposite approach, your client trusts you. And when they have your trust, their guard comes down. Then you come back and you, it's just like a package. It's like a, it's like a paper in high school. You start with the hook, the body, and then you conclude the whole thing. Same thing. So you get her in the mindset of, all right, Ashley, so how'd you like that workout today? Oh my God, that was so great. I really felt it during the, the, the hip thrust. And I really like that new exercise I've never done before, the, the plank variation. That's why I always try to put in at least one new exercise. So great. Okay. Now, so let's go over a plan that works best for you. How many times a week do you want to train? Oh, wow, Chris, this was just a really good workout. I'm, I think I'm going to do maybe two or three. Awesome. I'm going to suggest three. Now, one of the main problems that you said when you came in here is you really were concerned about your bone mineral density and osteoporosis. The great thing about it is you are young and you're healthy. I'm not too worried about it, but I think it would be great for you to go get a bone mineral density test 
And then what we can do is we can check it again in six months. And it's going to be really neat to see that progression. So I'm going to suggest that just for the first package, we, we keep it smaller. We're going to do 12 sessions. This is how much it's going to cost. How do you want to pay for it? That's it. And then you shut the hell up. Don't say another word. Don't freak out. Don't twitch. Don't start looking down. Don't start making weird fucking sounds or anything. Just shut up. And you just wait to see what she says. And then you go off of her. She says, oh, you know, it's too expensive. It's a common one, right? Let's talk about that a little more. What were you expecting when you came in here? Harmless question. What do you mean it's too expensive? What the fuck? I'm the best trainer in the world. I don't think she's going to train with you if you do that. So you just ask a simple question back. And you, you go on. What are some other pushback things you guys think you might get? They may not have the time. <laughs> Keisha thought that was funny. <laughs> so, all right. So let's take a look at your week. When do you typically like to train? Is it the hour session that's challenging? Or is it the commitment to three times a week? Which one is it? Notice how I address it quickly and put it right back on them. I don't want to talk. I want to see what their mind's doing. Because what's so easy for trainers to do is to get lost in the minutia of their crazy mind. And they start talking, well, um, you know what I think we can do is maybe we can, no, it's like, just shut up. You want them to talk. I'm looking at their body language. You don't have time. Okay, so you told me one of the main things that you, you do not, what you do not want to experience is osteoporosis. Let's play the devil's advocate. And what happens if you do get osteoporosis? Would you have time then? Now she's going to be like, oh, shit, that's a, that's a deep question. Yeah, I'm deep. I'm not just all looks. I'm deep, too. So get them to talk, but have fun banter with them where it's not salesy. People get intimidated by sales because of who's the number one person that we think of when we think of sales? Don't Time. Car salesman. There you go. Car salesman. It's push, 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 push because they want that widget. My widget is you not getting osteoporosis. So why in God's name would I feel any resent trying to get you to what you want? I know I can get you in the best shape of your life. So I'm actually legitimately curious on why you don't want to get there. So let's pretend like she doesn't, we tackled the time. What's another one you think she's going to say? I think the obvious one is going to be the, she's unemployed. More times than not, you guys are going to be surprised that if you provide the value, I can't afford this right now. Was well, there anyone that you know that maybe will help you out? Christmas is coming up. Well, actually, you know anything about it? I would love to ask my dad for 12 sessions. We have solutions for everything. I'm playing tennis with you right now. And if you hit me that ball, I'm going to hit it right back to you. Whatever hurdle, because I know that I can help you not get osteoporosis. I can help you get the, your dream body. I can help you get the guy or girl. I can help you get the promotion. I can give you a better sex life. Whatever. That's what sex, that's what sex, that's what exercise does. All of this stuff. So whatever your excuse is, I'm going to combat that. So worst case scenario, absolute worst. She says, you know, I, I don't have any family members that can help me out. I'm in a real tough situation. I'm about to get evicted from my place. I just literally have no money. Ah, that's, you know, perfectly all right, Ashley. What I want to do for you is I'm going to write you a workout plan that you can do at home. Now, it's just going to be body weight. But if you stick to this and you're consistent, this is going to help you and do the best that we can with preventing osteoporosis. Now, as maybe you get a job or you get some good luck that comes your way, I would suggest start buying some weights. Or when the gym start opening up, you can go in there and I'm going to give you some suggestions that you can do. Now, people in the beginning, like, oh, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. If, right now, you don't got shit going on, right? So if you start your, I'm going to get out of this one. There's our program. If you start, no, nope, not this one. Where are you? If you start desktop. Writing out these programs now, here's your program list. However long you've been doing this for, each week, each month, you're gonna get more and more of these. 
So you go to your program and you have literally 500 of these and you just scroll through them and you go, okay, I'm going to go to, there's my 40 year old. There's my workout. You copy it, you paste it. You go into the email. Don't do it right away. I'd almost suggest waiting like three or four hours. So it makes it think like you actually wrote it out. Change a couple things here, here, and here, and then personalize it. Hey, Ashley, here's the program. I'm going to suggest you do this. Here's the one that you can do at the gym. And these are good exercises. And notice this blue. What, what's this blue? What does that mean? Hyperlink. There you go. So you click on that. And guess what? Guess who gets credit now? I get credit. You go to my website. You're going to see me doing step ups. So I just got a point for this. And so when I say a point is the, the views are going to go up. So this is going to help with my brand. And then I'm going to check up with her in a week. How are the workouts going? She may not respond. That's okay. I check up with her in a week because I'm writing this all down in my book. After like 10 contact points, if she just completely ghosts me, then I'm going to write, Ashley is gone. That's it. You will be so happy when you start doing this regularly. And it comes to post-COVID. And it is June 2021. And Ashley reaches out and says, hey, remember me, Ashley? You saved her phone number. You go, oh, yeah, definitely. You know, we did this. Or you wore the, the gym shark shirt, whatever you want to say. You put some notes in there as well. Oh, wow, you remember? Yeah. Well, guess what? I just got a job, and I want to train with you three times a week. It's awesome. I got a 6 a.m. and I have a 5 p.m. Which one do you want? That's planting seeds. That's how you're going to be successful as a trainer. Too many trainers look at it as, fucking Ashley. She doesn't have a job. I hate her. It's like, no, what the hell? <laughs> Your mindset is crazy. No, people have unfortunate things going on. If you really want to help people provide that value, keep this stuff on record. This doesn't take you long at all. Send them a program. I, I've had trainers push back and be like, well, you know, they're not going to need you anymore. I could take LeBron James through a higher intense workout that he's done in his life. I'm not saying that LeBron James doesn't work hard. But trainers, us, we take people out of their comfort zone. So I can write up, a, think about this. Juan, are you a good cook? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, I love it. Do you think Wolfgang Puck would be a little concerned about giving you his lasagna recipe? Because he knows that even if you do make it, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like, but more, time, more than likely, you're probably going to screw it up some way because he has that special little thing, right? How many times has mom given us her, her recipe for cookies and it tastes like shit? <laughs> because we don't have that magical t t t that touch, right? It's the same with programs. A program isn't anything special. Our template that we have, it's not like, oh, my God, this is the show up template. It's the best thing in the world. So that's true. They don't have you. That's the most important thing. Go ahead, one. Uh, I was just, uh, I remember, I think it was from one of the morning classes that you were talking about that sparks your creativity because that challenges you in a way that if you want to keep, you know, improving and getting better over time, you're going to have to sacrifice time and come up and be more creative. But that's part of just uh, create, uh, creating stuff at first you're committing to. You just keep growing and not staying stagnant. <laughs> Using that cooking analogy, do you think that chefs experimented with their masterpieces one time? No, they do this stuff all the time. So this is our craft. When you're in the gym, you should almost look at it as work. Today I'm doing back. Okay, here's my workout, but I'm also going to learn two new back exercises I've never done before. And I challenge myself to come up with a new variant. So maybe you've never done you know, a high pull down. Maybe you've never done a like, behind the, the single arm row. Maybe you've never done a, a drop set variation with a neutral dumbbell and a pronated dumbbell. Play around with different variations because that's what your clients are going to like. Now, Ashley could be a division one athlete and she could say, yeah, I, I used to work with uh, Gunnar Peterson. He's a trainer in uh, LA. I'm not worried about it. It's just going to give me some ideas that she's probably been exposed to a little bit more. Ask good questions. Learn about that from Ashley and then apply that stuff into the workout. Go ahead, Ron. Let's say that uh, you do, we do some of the uh, accessory exercises, but 
with time, she she starts to like those exercises more than the staple exercises. How do you react to that? Great question. So what we can do is you could then almost do this as a group of two. You could even take the accessory out. So what we're going to do is take this out, take this out. And then you could have a whole little circuit at the end. That's like 15 minutes of just the accessories. So then she's going to see it as like, oh, I can't wait to get to the end to do all that fun stuff. But you optimize everything in the beginning. So let her know. It's like, oh, I, I, this stuff's awesome, right, Ashley? Think of this stuff as like dessert. When do we get dessert? You get it at the end. So we're going to kick ass in the beginning. But at the end, you're going to have that opportunity to get your dessert. So this is our template. It's a core pattern, a core pattern. And we will have more of these for more advanced people and, and so forth. Do you guys have any questions about this workout for Ashley? Yep. Yeah, I'm representing Irene, but my, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I just wanted to say, how do you determine which exercises are timed? That's a great question. So I think that that determines your comfort level with the exercises. And it, it, let's, let's use a basketball analogy. It's like, how do you determine what offense you want to run? Depending what personnel you have available. There you go. So if you got some slow dudes, maybe we got to go more zone. And maybe if you're, you got to, you look at the defense and they got a, a couple studs, maybe you got to go box one, whatever. It's like, you need to adapt to what your team can do, but also the other team. So the same scenario here. So I'm going to see what she's capable of. If her fucking squat just blows, okay, maybe we're not going to squat. <laughs> maybe we're going to focus more on a hinge pattern. Now, within the squat, let's do the most regressed ones. So, you know, looking at this list, I want to start with, you know, your TRX, your body weight, a box squat, and then you get into the more challenging ones with people. And you're just going to be able to tell when, when, they, when they move. The first time they do a squat, I couldn't tell you how many times I saw people like, they look like a fucking giraffe that was just born. It's like they're all over the place. You're like, what the hell are you doing? That's not how you squat. And you get frustrated, but they just haven't done it before. So I really like the goblet and or a weight held out in front of them because that counterbalance just fires up the erectors and it keeps the body nice and uptight, upright. So that's one of my go-tos. Like you're just going to find your go-tos. And you can have people that are a little more tough, like, you know, uh, Ripito, for example, Mark Ripito. Everyone needs to back squat this way. Everyone needs the conventional deadlift this way. I'm more of a, let's see, think of it like, clothes maybe like you have to dress a certain way versus let's see how you look in these different clothes and then i'm going to determine which one fits you the best so for squats for beginners i typically find goblets in the way out in front of you are best and then a back squat I, I don't do a lot of front squats with girls am i being sexist or why do you think that is Sorry, I couldn't hear that last part. I, I typically don't do a lot of front squat with girls. Can it hurt because her shoulders? Them. Yeah, why does it hurt their shoulders? Because they don't typically work it and because they're afraid of it and they don't want to get big there. You're, you're on the right path. It's, it's typically due to the fact that women lack hypertrophy on their deltoids. So it's going to be a lot more closer to the bone. It just doesn't feel good. So I, I do back squat. I get the pad on there. Uh, I do a lot of goblet squats. Uh, I, I'm just, a, I really like the hip thrust due to the low injury rate, the weight that you can move, and you really feel it. So girls, when they do that, it's still, you know, it's 2020. You get a lot of folk who, if you want a nice ass, you got to squat and you got a deadlift. Well, have you done a hinge? You do a, you do a uh, sorry a hip thrust. You do that with them, and you play around with the foot position. You know you can look at ten variants of just the, the the hip thrust. So you just need to train more people, and 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 just see what exercises are the best. So for for me to continue on with that for a pull, I love doing chin ups because of the it's, it's like very empowering. I love doing cable rows because single arm ones you'll feel it in your core. I like doing dumbbell rows because those are pretty simple. 
uh, for chest, uh, push-ups because most girls can't do them. The incline press would be next. And then bench press just because girls have a and like a mentality that like, you can't bench press. It's a guy exercise. And then for shoulders, I like doing standing military press, unilateral presses. Um, my favorite's handstands, but uh, most of your clients can't do that. When it comes to uh, unilateral, I'm a big, big, uh, I like to see what people are doing and then I go away from it. Like I try to be unique. So I like to step up. A lot of people lunge. And I just like fucking with people. And I'll tell them, oh, lunging is great if you want to develop your quads and they freak out. But if you if you really work on the kinematics of a step up, it, it will get you absolutely jacked as a dude or absolutely sexy and toned as hell as a girl. If you load that up properly, if you get a good bar on your back and you're stepping up there with good intent and you're not doing this, you know, lunge over and then push your ass up, if you can do it with the proper stabilization of your core, it takes time to get there, but it, it's, a, it's an amazing exercise. And then again, you're just going to find those exercises that you that you love. And almost like how I talked about the recipe for lasagna, you're going to have your recipe. I'm going to have my recipe. And for me, when I train 99.99% of girls when they come in, I do a hip thrust first. I'm going to do a push or pull up, depending on the availability around me. Then I usually do bicycle kicks because most people do them wrong. The next group, I'll do uh, a squat pattern. So usually... Um, goblets and then i'll do push or pull then i'll do another ab exercise and last one i'm going to do step ups and then i do a like a landmine press and then i like ending off on the uh, abductions with the trainer push down just to show that value because most times i won't do that and that's usually my my recipe right there and i couldn't tell you last time i didn't sign someone up so it's like you got to find your own little recipe that you like because what it does is it just takes thought out of it so all i'm doing during the assessment and the workout is just building a rapport. You know, I want to I want to learn more about her. I want to see what, what she likes, what she doesn't like, what are her thoughts on food and movies. And I try to grasp onto something and then we talk about it. And that rapport just really drops their guard. So then when you present the package at the end, it's like you're talking to a friend. All right. So, you know, you're going to learn a lot of great you know, information from your clients. You're going to hear stuff like, oh, I had this one girl. Uh, her name is Remy. And she was beyond loaded and she told me that for christmas that if her boyfriend this was during the first session if her boyfriend didn't get her no, no shit in you this is in west hollywood if he didn't get her twenty five thousand dollars worth of gifts she was gonna dump them and i'm like all right so when i went through her package i'm like you should definitely sign up for the six months and the six months is going to be x amount because that was the lingo that she talked and she's like oh, okay that's fine so it's like you do learn off of your clients so i will talk about cars in a way i'll talk about jewelry i'll talk about clothing um oh you you, you like I, I didn't know about fucking cartier cartier whatever it's like i learned all this stuff from my clients and they talk about their handbags and the stuff that they wear and if they're talking a lot about that that's data for you during that presentation oh you're telling me you can't afford this but you were just talking about this 500 hundred bag that you just got come on now really our priority is a little jacked up right now so I had this one client, her name was Claudia. She called me her shoe allowance because in in, um, in uh, Walnut Creek, she, at this time, at the time, it was only $60 per session because I was working for a gym, but she was spending six to $800 per month on me as her trainer. So she called me her shoe allowance because she would normally spend six to $800 per month on shoes. So she decided to not get those shoes anymore and train with me. That's just, these are things that, you haven't been exposed to. And the more you train, like people say, oh my God, that's so wild. It's like, uh, I can't even, I had a client roll up no less than um, six months ago in, in West Hollywood. His name is Jake. I love Jake. And he came and he's like, Chris, check out my new, uh, he sells weed and he uh, he uses all the, I'm a country boy. So I always kind of make her out of my country lingo. He has his, his lingo. And he's talking about his new whip. I didn't know what that was. And so we go out there and we check out his fucking golf cart. This golf cart is raised up on like 20 inch rims. And I'm just blunt. I'm like, what the fuck, Jake? How much did that cost? He's like, oh, 50 stacks. I'm like, I don't know what a stack is. What's a stack, man? <laughs> 50 grand for a golf cart. 50 grand. And I'm like, holy shit. It's just different lives, right? So you got to think about that your client in front of you is like Jake that they're spending 50 grand on golf carts. 
because as you will learn as we go through these assessments, most of our clients are lawyers, are bankers, are account, they, they, they have the money to spend. So that's our little rant for the night. Any other questions about this program? I had a question. It was kind of a piggyback to the last one. Um, you mentioned that if there was one, if her squad totally blows, that you would just, you know, you would go to the next one. Which would that be after one, or would you do what you were saying initially and trying to correct it before trying to based on what we're working on right now? Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna find an appropriate exercise for this pattern on the one. So if I'm doing a goblet squat and it's just whatever reason it's not working with her, then I would go over to the TRX and maybe do that, or maybe I would find just a completely different pattern. Maybe I if I, I mean I I don't can't recall anything right now, but. Maybe it's just like she's really jacked up and you decide to do a, a unilateral one instead and then just do a step up. You can do that as well. Okay. Any other questions, guys and girls? And again, as yeah, always, I'm sorry. go ahead. I was just going to ask, um, you think, but this, this might be a loaded question, with the amount of... Uh, like with the lack of movement that like in general population has, do you think the percentages of like sarcopenia are gonna regress and start a little bit younger than usual? Well, within within reason start. because of the time life of uh, of just how the body is. So it's like think of it like um, puberty, where like a kid's gonna hit puberty at a certain age. He's a male, at least. He's not going to start getting it like five or six just because of whatever. So it's kind of the same thing with um, progressions as you go throughout life. You, I see what you're saying. And let's say that people start getting sarcopenia around 55, 60. Sure, it can start going down to closer to 55 or 50. But it's also in relation to because as sarcopenia is taking place, hormonally, there's a, there's a big hormone that is, is dropping significantly. What hormone is that? I don't know. Uh, it's testosterone. So let's look at uh, sarcopenia lifespan testos, test testosterone. Let's see if I can get this chart from, I don't have my textbook in front of me, so... Yeah, I don't have that one. I'll have to find it in one of my textbooks. But um, essentially what you're going to find is, I mean, this is actually, this is actually pretty, this is not bad. This is, it's not as cool as the one I have in my textbooks, but it's kind of similar to this, right? So you hit puberty, you're going to get a huge increase, and then you got this drop off. And so resistance training, what that will do is it's going to delay that drop off. So I, I call it like resistance training. You're jumping out of a plane. You got no bag. You're just going to fall and die. Where when you jump out of the plane and you resistance train, it's like you have wings. So you're delaying it. We're all going to die. But what you're, you're able to do is you take this, this hockey, uh, inverse hockey curve, and you're just going to delay it out there. So maybe you can s delay the inevitable starting at 40 or 50. And I, I've seen graphs that people will – be able to maintain the not only bone mineral density, but also muscle at age 60, 70, and even as much as 80 to that of a 30 year old who's untrained, which blew my mind. So it's like just how important it is to exercise. And always remember wherever you are in this chart, you can continue to offset or reverse it within reason, but it's not like you're gonna be at 70 and all of a sudden see this crazy curve out. It's just gonna be wherever you are, you can delay that. So that's why it's so important where if you look at like a, you start working out up here, you're going to be where if we were the same age, this person's down here, I'm able to delay that huge. So I think that you're probably right. It, it, you're going to see this chart start getting closer to where right here, it's like 50 is significant. Maybe we'll start bumping into the 40s due to excess inflammatory markers in adiposity. I just ask because uh, you showed the... Uh, um, I forgot his the, his last name, but um, the doctor that you shared, that he had a a sarcopenia presentation. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. the name of the doctor, mm -hmm. but then I, I also was doing like some research, and then it was it it was saying that like after thirty, 
it's supposed to decrease three to five percent by the decade. So I, I just wanted to keep back on that. No, definitely. I mean, that, that's that's what happens. And so, how can you delay that by exercising? So when you when you exercise, it's going to delay and offset that that peak right there. And so you can potentially take this peak of you know, sarcopenia and you can just delay it and push it on over. So, I mean, exercise is funny. We're looking for the fountain of youth, right? We fucking know what it is, exercise. If you exercise regularly, that is the fountain of youth. You want to live longer, exercise. You want to look better, exercise. You want healthier skin, exercise. Better hair, exercise. It's just nuts. And that's why people get so frustrated today with like everything that's going on. It's like, it's unfortunate that policymakers aren't even talking about exercise. It's like, oh, let's find this. But it's like fucking exercise. How about that? Whole nother six pack of beers to drink over that conversation, though. All right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, any other questions? All right. So we uh, always appreciate you guys. Always appreciate when you share stuff in your story. Tag us. Tomorrow, 8 a.m., we'll uh, look at the – the post because I might be doing it a little later because I'm going to be driving back up to Santa Monica. So just look at the time for tomorrow's class because it might not be at eight. I'll let you guys know. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you.